Greetings, my beautiful lovelies. It's Emmy. How are you? It's great to see you and welcome back. Today, I'm going to be making a quick and easy dessert using candy bars. We're going to add a few ingredients to candy bar wrappers so that we can make candy bar ice cream on a stick. Sounds delicious, right? But what I really love is that you don't need any special molds. You don't need a popsicle mold that will sit in your pantry all winter long because you're not making popsicles when it's cold. And then when you need it in the summertime, you're missing the popsicle sticks or the litty part or the drip tray or, you know what I mean? You're missing something and then you're like, mmm, I can only make five out of the six popsicles and that's fine, but somehow I'm just not as satisfying. Today's inspiration comes from Tiga Mac. I saw this on Instagram. I'll put a link down below to their channel. But when I researched this, I saw evidence of this going back to 2019. It could be older. Let me know down in the comments if you've been doing this forever or any other references I should know about. But yeah, I saw it and I knew I needed to try it for myself. So let's go ahead and get started. So we need to make some ice cream base. I have seen some other versions of this using just milk, but if we just freeze milk, it's going to be very icy. We're truly going to have a popsicle. And we want something more like an ice cream, which has more sugar in it, usually some kind of cream, if not custard as in some sort of egg. We're not doing any of that. We're doing a version of the no churn ice cream. If you haven't seen that video, I have made a few different ones. I believe I made a mustard flavored, yes, French is yellow, <laughs> mustard flavored ice cream using the no churn method. I'll put a link to that down below. This recipe contains only four ingredients, three of which go into the ice cream base. So to a two cup measuring cup, we want half a can of condensed milk. So that's 200 grams. So we have our condensed milk, and to that we're going to add 300 milliliters of heavy cream. Blunk. And a little splash of vanilla extract. Boop. So to help incorporate the thick condensed milk, I'm gonna use a whisk and blend this up. And there we go. That's it, so simple. Ice cream base finished. Next. We're gonna need a selection of candy bars. I've never done this recipe before, so I grabbed a few different kinds because I wanna know what the flavors will be. In the video I saw, Tiga Mac uses a crunchy bar, which is made by Cadbury, and it's not really commonly found here in the States. And a crunchy bar, from my understanding and from my remembrance, is made with chocolate on the outside and inside has honeycomb. So in that vein, I imagine that the candy bar will crumble very easily. So I got a Butterfinger as a bit of a substitute, but I also got some other flavors because I thought these might be interesting. Crunch, Good Bar. I also did a Twix, which I'm going to try, and Mint Bar because I love mint. So all we need to do is crush the candy bar. It's important when we crush our candy bar to do this kind of gently because we want to kind of maintain the integrity of the bag. We're trying to avoid any leaks because this is going to be our mold. A Butterfinger is a chocolate coated, peanut butter flavored candy bar. That's what it looks like inside. It's kind of orange in color and it's pretty light and crunchy. So I'm gonna do a preliminary snap snap and then a crush. Sorry for the noise. Yes, indeed, that is crushed. Uh, same can be done with the crunch bar. I found smashing it from the opposite side helps to kind of get everything mush. And we don't have to mush it up too small, just enough so that the there's even distribution and that the ice cream base can get to the bottom. Okay. Now, I did make one of these, and I don't recommend the Andes Mint Bar, although these are delicious. The chocolate is very, very firm, and there's not a lot of room in there to crush everything up. It's very solid and difficult to crush. This one I would recommend taking out some of the candy bar before filling up the ice cream base with it because, so that there's enough room. It's a very tight fit. So, crushed candy bar. Now, get yourself a glass so we can hold up our candy bar. Now we're gonna open the Butterfinger on one end. Open it like this. I guess you could use scissors and cut it too, but we're trying to have as much 
of the packaging as possible so we have a bigger mold. All right, so that's open right there. And inside you can see the crushed candy bar, I hope. And same thing with the crunch bar. So then when you open your bar, squeeze it this way so that you have a nice big opening. Having a skewer on hand is really useful when I did this last night because then it ensures that the ice cream base gets all the way to the bottom. Some of these candy bars, especially the packaging, is a little bit tighter, so it's more difficult for the liquid to get all the way to the bottom. So what we'll do is pour a little bit of the base in and it will go all the way to the top, but it's not full by any means. Then take your skewer using the blunt side, because again, we don't wanna poke any holes in our bag. Pointy side pointing up, blunt side down. You could also use a chopstick. Give this a little push all the way to the bottom and then you'll see the ice cream base settle. Good. And keep adding, yep. poking and plunging and you'll feel the ice cream base You'll feel it kind of cold and squishy and you'll feel when it gets all the way to the bottom. So poke it all the way down until you can feel the skewer touch the bottom and you can feel the liquid kind of settling in the bottom. This is more important for these narrow candy bars. For these candy bars that have a bigger package, it's much easier to feel the ice cream base settle to the bottom. So let me show that one. Much easier to fill too. So that I can feel goes straight to the bottom. No fuss, no muss, no dealing with trying to plunge anything to the bottom. It's just done. So already that is a plus to me. Next, we're gonna take wooden popsicle sticks and place them in our candy bar ice cream base mixture. I happen to have little apple sticks. If you don't have either one, you could certainly even use plastic spoon or plastic fork or something, something that will give your popsicle a handle. Okay, so now we take this whole special rig and put it into your freezer and freeze it for several hours, if not overnight, and then we can give them a taste. So let me run to my freezer and grab the ones I made last night so we can taste them. Okay, be right back. Alrighty, lovelies, the candy bars that are now ice cream bars are here frozen solid and let's give them a taste. I cannot wait to open these to see what they look like. Let's taste the Butterfinger. So let's open it up and see what's inside. Oh my gosh, look, it totally worked. Oh, it's sticking a lot. That's annoying. So I think it's because it's mostly candy bar at the very top. Yes, because you can see it crumbling down. See that? It's mostly at the bottom, even though I used a skewer to poke it all down didn't quite get all the way down. So it's wanting to bend, look at that. Not that pretty, but let's give it a go. So to avoid this, I think you would pour some of the candy out so that you would have less candy bar to ice cream ratio. Alrighty, let's give it a taste. Itadakimasu. I have not had a Butterfinger in I don't know how long, but that bite was all Butterfinger. Very peanut buttery, very crumbly yet crunchy texture, a little bit salty, a little butterscotchy as well. And of course, just a light coating of chocolate on the outside. Didn't get any ice cream in that at all. So if you make the Butterfinger version, I recommend empty out half of the candy bar from the package because you can't get the ice cream to the bottom. So I'm gonna rip that part off and I'm gonna taste this part down here that has the ice cream. Here we go. Mm-hmm, mm, now we got it. And that's delicious too. That's ice cream, great vanilla flavor, enough sweetness from the condensed milk to make it dessert-like. The heavy cream adds some nice richness. And then you get a nice peanut buttery flavor from the candy bar, which gets infused in the ice cream. Delicious. Next, let's try one of the big ones. Let's try a Twix. Doesn't that look great? Twix bar. And look at that one. Okay. That looks great. Alrighty. Twix bar. Itadakimasu. Mmm. Mmm. <laughs> mmm. Mmm. That one's really good. I've never had Twix flavored 
ice cream before, but the caramel solidifies and gets kind of crunchy. And then you've got the cookie in there, which tastes a little bit like graham cracker crumbs. So it's kind of like cookies and cream with a little bit of caramel. Now the caramel is melting a bit. It's getting a little stickier and chewier. The vanilla ice cream base is a perfect combination with the caramel cookie chocolate combination. Delicious, really good combination. And this one was super easy to fill up. Mm -hmm. I need to stop. I'm just gonna eat the other ones and this should go in the freezer. Another classic ice cream candy bar combination, in my opinion, Heath Bar, which is English toffee coated in chocolate. Yeah. Ooh, this is starting to melt. No! Eat these quickly, y'all, because they melt really quickly. Okay, this one too has the same problem as the butter finger. Most of the candy collected at the end, and then we have most of the ice cream at the bottom. So this too, we should remove some of the candy. So let's have a bite of it since it broke. Here we go. Mmm. Mm -hmm. I forgot to mention in the other taste test that so the ice cream base is great. It doesn't feel icy at all and is plenty rich and both feels and tastes like ice cream. This combination, I have to say, is a little bit too sweet for me. Ice cream base is very sweet and vanilla and I thought I would love the combination with toffee and chocolate. And I do, it's just too sweet. So I think I would add maybe a third of the toffee bits so just have a third of the candy bar in there with the ice cream base because the entire candy bar is just way too sweet and heavy. Alrighty, I'm just gonna continue. Let's try the Andes Mint. As some of you may know, mint chip is my favorite combination. And based on how it was for the other long bars, I think this one's gonna be hard to extricate as well. This one is very melty as well, see? All right, let's give <laughs> this one a taste. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. Andy's mints are delicious. Great combination of minty flavor, peppermint flavor with dark chocolate, but it doesn't really work in this recipe at all to add such a little amount of ice cream base. So little of the ice cream actually fits in the wrapper that you don't really get the full kind of ice cream experience. You just get this kind of a little bit of this sweet milky stuff and then mostly a crushed up candy bar. That one doesn't work. Wow, all right. Well, I'm certainly learning a few things here. So the last two are some fatties. So hopefully we'll have better luck with these. Let's try the crunch bar, which is a chocolate bar that has little crunchy bits in it. This too was very easy to fill. And easy to open. There it is, Mondo. So we have concentration of crushed up candy at the bottom and lots of ice cream. All right, here we go, it's a Mm-hmm. Mm. There's enough ice cream at the bottom of this to get ice cream candy, ice cream chocolate candy, you know, rather than it being all candy. I know that that proportion will shift more to ice cream as we go down lower. Mm, mm hmm this one works. Wow, a lot of chocolate in there. The crunch of the chocolate bar goes really well with the creamy vanilla ice cream. Yes, this one's a winner. Alrighty, lastly, a Mr. Good Bar. Now, Mr. Good Bar is a milk chocolate bar with bits of peanuts. And for me, that is my favorite, along with mint chip, combination of ice cream. I love vanilla ice cream with chopped up peanuts and chocolate fudge. Hot fudge, that to me, and mint chip, those are my go-to options in summer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I thought I'll do a Mr. Good Bar because that's chocolate and peanuts, chopped peanuts in particular, and ice cream. I never pick this candy bar ever. It's kind of old timey in my opinion, but for ice cream, whoa, look at that one. Mm-hmm. Wow, I'm smelting all over the place. Here we go. Mm. 
Mm -hmm. mm. This one is a classic flavor combination for me. You know what it reminds me of? Of a drumstick. You know the frozen ice cream cones that you can buy with the vanilla ice cream and then it has hard shell chocolate with peanuts? That's what it tastes like. That combination of chopped peanuts, vanilla ice cream, and chocolate. That's what this tastes This one's great. The top concentration of chocolate is pretty concentrated of candy bar, but then you take a little bite of the vanilla down below and then the proportions kind of shift back to, you know, balance. Mmm, oh god. <laughs> Alrighty, my lovelies. So yes, indeed, you can take a chocolate candy bar and turn it into a delicious ice cream confection on a stick. I do have a couple recommendations. Choose candy bars that have a nice wide wrapper and that are not too long. And of those flavors, I really like the Mr. Good Bar, which is the chocolate peanut combination. The Twix was pretty good and the Crunch Bar was pretty good as well. I think also uh, something like a regular plain chocolate bar would be delicious as well. Then you'd have kind of a chocolate chip flavor going on or a package of Oreo cookies I think would be delicious too. Just remove a couple of the Oreos so that you don't have too much cookie. I found that just using the entire candy bar itself was a little bit too much of the additions to the ice cream. But having said that, for the wide packaging, for the Mr. Good Bars and the Crunch Bars, I didn't have to take any of the candy out at all because there's still plenty of space for the ice cream to go. I think the ideal proportion of candy bar to ice cream is about one part candy to two parts ice cream and that way it feels a little bit more balanced but let me know if you try this and if you have tried it let me know what your favorite combination is down in the comments below all right my lovelies thanks as always for watching i hope you enjoyed that one i hope you learned something please share this video with your friends follow me on social media like this video subscribe and i shall see you in the next one toodaloo take care bye <laughs>